Hi folks, on today's Fusion Friday, I'm going to show you how we can take a pretty large part like this, it's 22 inches long, too big for our Tormach machine, and break up the cam into chunks. That way we could machine this thing in multiple setups or multiple passes. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So the part's 22 inches long and 11 inches wide. Too big for the travel in both the X and the Y. You guys know we love the adaptive strategies and you can see here, this is a 3D adaptive we've run right here, which would be simply, actually heck, let's just do it over again. 3D adaptive clearing, so easy. That's what's amazing about this. I'm gonna pick our shear hog tool, 49. I don't love these filters. We're working on that though. And what's amazing, I'm gonna adjust my width of optimal load here, width of cut, um, but really, and I have a screw up heights thing, sorry. I'm on the bottom. Click okay. That's all you've gotta to do to make an awesome 3D tool path. Like this is to me, one of the best things about Fusion 360 is just how easy it is to get not only a toolpath, but in this case, a pretty darn good toolpath. Okay, awesome, love it. And that's the really cool thing about the 3D toolpath is it handles all of the different height planes of all these different geometries. I wanna make a quick mention that under edit, passes, I usually check flat area detection. That's really important because it's gonna find the flat areas and make sure it machines those subject to your axial stock to leave. But why are you watching this video? You're watching this video because I wanna understand how can I make this toolpath limit to just a section? Because what if we only want to machine a portion of it like this? So let's head back into model. And I'm actually gonna put this sketch in the parent, not within the component. I don't think it would matter what you do. If anybody knows differently, let me know in the comments. And I'm just going to hit sketch, or I'm gonna click two point rectangle. It's gonna say select a plane. I'm gonna pick the top of my part. And for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna just pick a box from here. Let's say over to here, just something strange. You might wanna divide this up into equal quadrants depending on how many uh, how big the part is and how many um, times you'll have to reposition it. So when we machine this, we want our top left area to be our work coordinate, uh, X, Y, Z, zero. So I've got my sketch. You can see it's the sketch two right here. Hop back into cam. And um, I already did this on a demo here, but let's take this tool path and limit it to that area. So I'm gonna right click, actually, uh, first let's change our X, Y, Z, zero. You can see right now it's in the middle of our part. Right click, edit, and under, I'm gonna change it to model box point. And under box point, I'll pick this point right here. And that's all I need to do, awesome. I'll right click on the adaptive toolpath, edit. And under the second tab, geometry, machining boundary, if it, does, if it says none, change it to selection, but either way, make sure it says selection here. And then this is super easy. Machining boundary selection, just click your sketch. Click OK. How freaking cool is that? Now let's say we wanna do the same thing, but for a 2D adaptive, because let's say we only wanna focus on this interior trough here. 2D, adaptive clearing, same tool's fine. I'll pick, you know, let's say I'll pick this face and just for now, I'll just click okay and see what we get. It should machine this whole inside pocket. It does, but again, we wanna limit it to the box. So now I'll right click, edit, and under geometry, this one kind of threw me, stock contours. Check stock contours and then stock selections. Pick the um, box here. And I think if it helps you understand it, the, the approach to this, the mentality is you're picking the stock that's eligible to machine. So you're sort of saying, eh, forget about the model. This is where I actually have stock. I, I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but maybe that'll help you make sense as to why they choose that lingo. Awesome. Um, same thing with the 2D contour, which is really cool. If I do 2D contour, 
we'll switch to say a, a finish end mill. And if I were to pick this and click OK, it's going to do a chain all the way around that. Well, that's no good. And boy, if you guys have used CAM before, you know what a pain it is to like try to create construction geometry or new geometry that's only the area where you want it. Not needed. Right click, edit, geometry, stock contours, pick my box, click OK. Boom. How amazing is that? What's super cool as well is it goes without saying it's parametric. So go back to model and let's edit this sketch and let's just drag this point now, you know, over to here. Stop sketch, go to cam, regenerate that toolpath. Um, by the way, I really like to turn sketches off once you're done using them. It's really good CAD etiquette, I find. Um, but you can see here as it's as it's calculating that toolpath, um, it obviously could do. Oh, that's interesting, huh? That really shouldn't have happened. I wonder if that's a glitch. It, it shouldn't have uh, brought that toolpath all the way out. I'll send this to the Fusion guys. I don't think it should have. Um, that looks good. That's obviously can get everywhere. And then this it updated the 3D toolpath to accommodate everything it selected. So. Folks, I think this is amazing. It makes it super easy. We actually did this on a part, which is why I thought to make this video. But here's the thing. It's not always for parts that are bigger than uh, your machine travel. A lot of times a cam or advanced cam is all about tool uh, toolpath containment, picking the tools path and limiting where you want it to go, especially when you get into some of the crazier 3D strategies for cleanup or for certain using a certain tool in a certain area. So hope you guys enjoyed that Fusion Friday. We love publishing a video every Friday on how to use Fusion 360. This model will be available on our Patreon uh, website for as little as a dollar a month. You can not only support the content we're creating, but also get a lot more access to me for questions, but also files like this. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you next Friday.